Hello, my name is Max. I have Asperger's Syndrome. This video is the eighth part of a series of videos where I address the various symptoms of AS and give vivid examples of these symptoms from my own life. Briefly, before we begin, in case you haven't watched the first video and are not inclined to, refer to the description box for my modus operandi. It will only take a few seconds to read and might provide you with worthwhile context for the rest of this video and the series. For this video, I have to start off by being upfront and transparent about something. In case some of you didn't know, I have started a weekly live show called Differently Wired. The show features me, as well as a man named John Tucker, who is a PhD specializing in ADHD and autism coaching. The whole point of the show is to give advice and resources to those who are suffering from mental health or autism-related issues. Just over a week ago, we did an episode on the subject of drugs and substance abuse. This was a subject that many people requested I tackle for the Truth About Asperger's Syndrome series, but I feared my experiences with drugs and substances was too limited for a full episode. Therefore, I relegated it to a main topic for the live show. What you are about to watch is the full opening segment from that episode where I discuss what experiences I've had with drugs, with graphics and edits inserted where necessary. While this might seem cheap, I'm doing this for two reasons. One is obviously to bring attention to the live show, but not for entirely selfish reasons. A lot of people have been asking for help and advice with their issues, and I want to direct those people who might exclusively watch this series to the Differently Wired series so I might help them sooner. The second reason I'm doing this is because I want to do a separate video on the subject of drugs and substance abuse where the audience has a moment to speak. Much like what I did for episode 4.5 of this series where I heard from female viewers exclusively, I want to hear about your experiences regarding recreational drugs, prescription drugs, and alcohol so other people can learn from them. If you want to be a part of that video, please send your stories to me via email. Use the address you see on screen now, maxdarrett at yahoo.ca. That episode where the audience heard the female perspective was an immense success in the sense that it helped people understand the unique troubles that come along with being female and having AS, and how they might help themselves or others avoid those troubles in the future. I highly encourage those who might have a history with drugs and substance abuse, who also have Asperger's syndrome, to share their story, so they might help in the same way those women did. With that out of the way, here's my story. This is a topic that a lot of my viewers have requested. The reason why I have avoided it up until this point is because as far as recreational drugs go, I have never done any. Never have I smoked marijuana or cigarettes, and never have I done any of the more dangerous substances. In regards to alcohol, I can count on one hand the number of times I've ever been drunk in my life. I've been so uninterested in drugs and alcohol that I didn't have my first drink until I hit my country's legal age of 19. I suppose I could have discussed the issue in regards to other people, but pretty much all of my videos have been about my personal experiences as somebody with high-functioning autism. Don't get me wrong, I have no prejudice against certain drugs or alcohol. As long as you're not hurting yourself or anyone and you do things in moderation, more power to you. For me personally, these subjects never interested me much. Now, with all that being said, like I just said before, I do have a lot of experience with prescription drugs, a few of which should never have been prescribed to me. See, from the time I was 17 to about 21, I had been prescribed seven different drugs, all normally taken to help people with mental illness. Now, while I do have mental health diagnoses such as ADHD and general anxiety disorder, they are symptomatic of my greater diagnosis, which is, of course, Asperger's syndrome, as all you all know. The big problem therein has to do with how mental illness is treated medically compared to autism. Mental illness, generally speaking, has to do with chemical imbalances in the body, some of which might be related to hereditary factors, while others might have to do with diet and inflammation. Autism is different in the sense that it has to do with the way the brain is wired, whereas some chemical imbalances can be corrected via antidepressants or stimulants, prescription drugs cannot rewire a brain. Granted, there are some medications which might help the person with autism to cope, but the underlying autism-related issues cannot be quote-unquote fixed. In my experience with prescription drugs, for a time I was being given medication by doctors who misdiagnosed me. Instead of being somebody with ADHD, general anxiety disorder, and at the time depression as symptoms of autism, I was being medicated as somebody who did not have autism. The doctors were trying to fix something rather than help me cope with something. And as a result, my entire physiology experienced a wide range of effects, from the most hellish of sensations to the most heavenly. Now before I detail what these drugs were, I just want to stress that while some of these drugs did not work for me, they have worked wonders in other people. Like autism, everybody's biological makeup is different. 
and it exists on a spectrum, like autism, and you may react with differing positive and negative effects. Therefore, don't let my stories completely deter you from something that you might require. But having said that, don't discount my stories either if you are seeking some form of medical plan. The following are the seven drugs I have been prescribed in chronological order. Ciprolex, Wellbutrin, Vyvanse, Cymbalta, Abilify, Concerta, and Xanax. The Ciprolex was prescribed first because it was used to treat general anxiety disorder, which was my first diagnosis. Now, when I first started taking it, a number of horrifying things happened. One of which was that I gained somewhere around 40 to 50 pounds in like two months. Worst of all was that I lost any ability to feel almost any emotion. Now, for anybody who has experienced the worst excesses of depression or anxiety, this sounds ideal at first, to not feel any negative emotion whatsoever, but be weary. What I learned while taking Ciprolex is that the only thing more terrifying than intense negative emotion is feeling no emotion at all. Now why? Emotion is what conveys a sense of self, of individuality. It is the unique way each of us feel and express emotion that makes us distinguishable from our fellow man. Now when that capacity is removed wholesale, that loss of individuality, that loss of emotion, is like a loss of soul. You essentially become a robot, an automaton, because you lose the most essential aspect of being human. Now, if you want a vivid picture of what this is like, there's an episode of The Simpsons that I'm sure a lot of you have seen, where the character of Bart sells his soul. Now, upon doing so, he loses the ability to laugh. This terrifies Bart, not on an emotional level because he can't express emotion, but on an existential level. The effects of being on Ciprolex, personally, shares disturbing congruity with Bart's loss of soul. At the time, because I was scared out of my wits like Bart, I decided to gradually wean myself off the drug. Unfortunately, my emotions didn't come back with the same desirable slowness. Rather, they hit me like a ton of bricks. Now, if you want a vivid picture of what this is like, allow me to briefly reference a video game called Metal Gear Solid 4. Now, in that game, soldiers have their emotions regulated by tiny microscopic devices called nanomachines, injected into them via syringe. Now, these nanomachines can promote the release of neurotransmitters, hormones, and stimulants, giving them an edge in battle. But simultaneously, it also controls the soldier's pain, emotion, and senses. Early in the game's first act, the villain turns off said nanomachines, and as a result, all the pain, fury, sorrow, trauma, stress, hatred, regret, and guilt they suppressed were unleashed immediately within the hearts of every soldier, and it led to convulsions, vomiting, and permanently broken minds. Now, it might sound hyperbolic, but this is really the best way I can describe coming off a of Ciprolex. For example, I remember one day I was at school, a week or two after deciding to come off the drug. I had gotten a below average mark on a test, which was a big deal because I was trying to get into university at the time and I needed a good grade point average. Now just because of this, because of this bad mark, I ran outside and punched a tree. Not once, not twice, but 10 times I ran my fist into the bark. And if I punched an 11th time, I probably would have broken my hand. And as I fell to the ground in pain and having all these terrible emotions cloud my brain, I lost my rational capacity. I was this close to jumping in front of an oncoming truck because I was right next to the road where this tree was. And luckily, before I made my attempt, two other students rushed over to me and helped me to the office. And that was just the first drug I ever took. Vyvanse was where things got especially interesting. When I was diagnosed with ADHD, Vyvanse was prescribed for that reason. Now, given the fact that my sister has ADHD and had remarkable success taking Vyvanse, it seemed reasonable to give it a try, right? When I first took Vyvanse, I felt incredible, elated. I felt like Santa Claus on Prozac at Disneyland, drinking nothing but milkshakes and never gaining weight. That's how good I felt. For three days, I was on top of the world, but then the fourth day came around. I felt amazing for half the day, and then something really bad happened. I didn't know a better way to describe it at the time, but it felt like my skin was thinning and my insides were trying to jump out. What I later found out was that I was experiencing something called formication. Now, for those who don't know, formication is a form of hallucination that tends to happen when drug addicts go cold turkey in rehab. You ever hear the expression, it felt like my skin was crawling? That's what formication is. The fifth day came and the sixth day came and the formication came faster and became much more intense. It then got so bad that I made another serious suicide attempt, one which put me in hospital for two weeks. I later found out that depending on the person, taking Vyvanse could be like taking cocaine. Yeah, 
A doctor told me that what I was experiencing was almost exactly like cocaine withdrawal. The only difference being that one drug is illegal and goes by a different name. Now some of you might be wary about the way I'm presenting these experiences, making it seem like prescription drugs for mental health always results in nightmare fuel. No, let me be clear. While antidepressants and stimulants might not have worked for me in some cases, they work wonders in millions of other people. They don't always result in bad side effects. Now though I had bad experiences with Ciprolex and Vyvanse, I experienced neither good nor bad effects while on Welbutrin, Abilify, or Concerta. And as far as Cymbalta and Xanax goes, I experienced mildly positive effects. In the case of Xanax, it relieved feelings of anxiety pretty well. Um, Cymbalta was what I was prescribed after I was hospitalized from taking Vyvanse. And, and thankfully Cymbalta was selected for me because it is one of the recommended SNRIs used in treating adults with Asperger's syndrome. And of all the drugs I have taken, I recall Cymbalta having the most positive effect. To conclude, the overall point of this monologue is not to scare people. The point is to be sure what your problem is before you take medication. If you are seeking out a diagnosis for a mental health problem and you think medication might be the best idea, bloat the idea to your general practitioner about whether or not you might be on the spectrum. I could have saved myself a lot of pain if I had been diagnosed with autism before all of this, and you can too. As well, if you have autism, there are medications you can take to help you cope with your symptoms. Although remember, like I said, you can't take medication to fix autism like you can potentially fix a chemical imbalance. And finally, it should go without saying, but don't take any drugs without a doctor's approval or recommendation. You are not a medical professional. They are. Whether it's something tried and tested like Cymbalta or something more recent and innocuous like, I don't know, cannabis oil, there are options available. This is where that segment ended. Again, I know what I said was limited, but that is why I am encouraging people to submit their stories so they can educate people where I could not. When and if you email me, please do your best to keep your story to 1,000 words or less, so that way we can include as much content as possible in the next video. If you have a question related to this topic or anything else regarding AS or mental health, I again encourage you to tune into the Differently Wired show. John and I go live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 1900 hours for those in the military and overseas. Trust me, we are very interested in helping you move beyond your mental predispositions so you can live a happy and productive productive life. Lord knows that just having your problem heard and validated has helped you immensely, as it has helped me. And finally, by popular demand, I have created a Discord server. What was once exclusive is now open to the public. If you want to join, look in the description box of this video and click the link. I look forward to seeing you all there. Until next time guys, just remember, you deserve to be happy.